On today's episode of In The Know, we'll be exploring Intuit Enterprise Suite product updates to multi-entity functionality, dimensions in the bank feed, and projects. This is a follow-up episode that demos the updates you heard about from Manuel a few weeks back. Now we get to see them in action. Hey, Pro Advisors, it's Jacqueline, and you're watching In The Know, where you get exclusive access to demos of Intuit product enhancements by the leaders who built them. So let's jump right into the demos with Daniel, who leads Intuit Enterprise Suite. Daniel, welcome, and thanks for being back on the show. Thanks so much, Jacqueline, and uh, let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is multi-entity. So we're going to navigate to the multi-entity landing page. Now, before this latest release, you were able to run your consolidated financials through Spreadsheet Sync, where it pulled the data across all the related parties in the organization, along with your elimination column and ultimately giving you your consolidated financials and also allowing you to do manual eliminations through spreadsheets. Well, now we've actually brought that directly to uh, into an enterprise suite. So you can do it all within the platform. Um, and so we're, I'm going to jump right in and show you what the profit and loss looks like on a consolidated basis. We pull it up now. Obviously, this year just started. I don't have anything in there. So I'm actually going to navigate back to last year. And right away, you see your consolidated financial. So you've got the parent, the two children or subsidiaries, and you've got your eliminations column all the way down. Now, like I said, previously, this was available through Spreadsheet Sync, and now it is available directly in product. And the first question you're going to ask me is, well, okay, great, but how do I actually do my eliminations if they're not going to be automatically eliminated, which we went through in previous demos? And I would say that is a great question. Um, but before we jump into that, there's one additional enhancement that I think is definitely worth calling out. And that is the ability to actually um, copy previous intercompany journal entries and duplicate them essentially to create new ones. So you don't have to start from scratch every time because typically you will have very similar common transactions on a regular basis. And you don't want to have to start from scratch every time. And so I'm actually going to look at this intercompany journal entry. So we pull it up. And in this case, you've got parent who's um, making a sale to a child entity. So for the parent, we have a credit to sales for $3,000. So sales goes up. Uh, we have a do from child for $3,000, um, making that go up. And then on the other side, you have the child who now has an expense for advertising and marketing, which is a service that the parent provided to the child. And you have a do to parent to um, as an owing for that service. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually click more. And now we have an ability to do copy before it just said delete. Now we can actually copy this journal entry. And let's say in this case, I want it to be posted on 26th of December, uh, the previous year. And let's say in this case, it's not advertising marketing, but rather maybe, let's see, let's pick legal and professional services. And um, I'll leave it as $3,000. And so now we have the exact same kind of template that we have for the previous transaction or journal entry. And now we have the same thing, except we changed this to professional uh, legal. And we'll, for the sake of the demo, we'll leave all numbers the same. Let's say we're happy with that. We'll click Save. Now we know that our intercompany balances for do to do from will automatically get eliminated. And I will show you how we know that because we had selected them in our intercompany elimination um, selections. And so for parent, you can see you've got do to do from the children and then vice versa from the children do to from do to parent from parent to the other child from the other child, right? So those will automatically get eliminated. But for sales in company sales transaction and then the related expense on the other side will not get automatically eliminated. And it's probably for the best because you have other transactions that are going through those accounts that aren't necessarily related to intercompany transactions. So you wouldn't want to eliminate the whole thing. And so what we've allowed you to do now is actually go to add and instead of an intercompany journal entry, you can actually do a uh, manual elimination. And so now what we're looking to do is let's go back to parent and let's say we want to go to sales and we want to back out that 3000 on the sales side. Um, and then we want to go to the child, I believe it's child one and it was legal. And we want to back out that legal expense for $3,000. 
And so now this is what we're calling a manual elimination tree. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Great. And then now I'm actually going to go to the profit and loss, consolidated. And now in our consolidated profit and loss for the previous year, we should now see those eliminations. So now the elimination for sales goes up to 6,000 because that's including the previous marketing, advertising marketing expense, as well now with the addition of legal and professional fees. All eliminated and um, now I've got a complete consolidated financial statement, in this case, a P&L. Um, okay, so that is manual eliminations for uh, consolidated financials as well as in-product consolidation. So you no longer have to depend on um, spreadsheet sync and doing it in uh, Excel. All right, let's go back. Okay, next we are gonna talk a little bit about some user management related to multi-entity. And so I'm going to switch to a different company. So now I'm in a different company, it's called Keystone Terra. And in this case, I'm going to go to user management. All right. So in my user management, I can now see all the different um, users I have across all my entities. And the way I did that is by clicking all companies here. I could also obviously navigate to individual companies if I'd like. Like in this case, I'm going to Keystone Bluecraft, or I go back to all companies. When I'm on the all companies view, it will actually show me for each individual user. So in this case, I'm looking at one of my other profiles. I open it up and I can see exactly uh, which companies this user's attitude as well as the role that they have. Um, and if I collapse it, it'll actually give me a summary here. So in this case, I've got myself in my other profile on two different entities. In this case, the other user has six entities, in this case, eight entities. And for each one of these, I can expand and see exactly which entities it is and what role they have for those respective entities. Now, one other thing I wanna show here is I can do um, bulk changes. So if I wanna make any changes, so let's say for example, this is an employee who we are now offboarding. Um, we now mitigate the risk of potentially forgetting to take them out of one of the companies by going to edit. And I can now both remove them, change the roles, or even add somebody new through the same process. And in this case, I am a project manager for Keystone Construction and an HR manager for Keystone Terra. And so we're gonna take a little bit of a um, tangent here and we're actually going to talk about this brand new role called HR manager role. Now, this role is only available with our payroll elite offering. Um, and when combined with the enterprise suite, I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I'm going to switch to that profile. And here it is. So now I am actually logged in as an HR manager to Keystone Terra. And you can see that my left navigation is fully customized for an HR manager role meaning I only see the different selections that are relevant to me as an HR manager, and I will not see anything related to the financials that don't um, shouldn't matter to me uh, as an HR manager, and that the owner, the CFO, the controller probably don't want the HR manager to have visibility to. So it's a fully segregated role, and you can see my left navigation is, is customized accordingly. If I click on new, my options here are also customized for an HR manager role, as well as my gear icon at the top, we call this a global navigation. Again, it will only show me what would be relevant to me as an HR manager. All right, let's jump back to the company we were on earlier, which is Keystone Terra as the primary admin or a company admin for that matter. And so I'm back here. And the next thing I'd like to show is our enhancements to uh, dimensions. And so, in the previous launch, we enabled dimensions on all the different transaction forms. In the latest release, we actually also enable it at, at the uh, bank feed level. And so I can see here, you know, permanent fees, I could open that up and now immediately notice that I've got my dimensions down here. So customer type, the earthwork type, utilities, and concrete. These are my four dimensions. I also have my old class, which I can also use if I wanted to. Um, and then once I'm happy with that allocation, I click add and it'll get categorized and posted accordingly. So now we also support dimensions directly from the bank feed. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about is the new KPIs that we've released that will be relevant for both construction businesses as well as professional services. So if I go back to my dashboard, 
Okay, now on my dashboard, I will now notice if I scroll down, I've got a bunch of new widgets. We call them KPI widgets. And so we now have what we call debt to asset ratio, our return equity ratio, our return on asset, working capital, and debt to equity ratio. These are all very important financial metrics. Um, and they are now available on the Intuit Enterprise Suite. And these have been particularly popular for professional services, for construction businesses, but not limited to those industries. Um, this is going to be fairly impactful for really any industry, um, but we do know they over-index to those two. And as you can see, I mean, my metrics aren't great for this company, but they're here. And if I want to get more information, I can go directly to the report by clicking on the hyperlink there, and it'll take me to my balance sheet, and I'll then be able to see all the numbers that make up that um, KPI. All right. Next, we are going to pivot and we are going to talk to, not to, we're going to talk about projects and a number of new innovations that came to projects. The first thing is if I go to my project list, this is all about task management and, and really overall uh, project management. So I'm going to click on this one project. I am going to scroll down and I will notice that under my tasks section, I now have a new column called priority. And what that means is if I actually create a new task, I now have a drop down here called priority. So I can give it a low, medium, high, or urgent priority, and it will be categorized accordingly inside um, the, the task itself. And then it will just be displayed within the task landing page here. And so let's say, for example, contingency planning, I want to go in here and I want to categorize this as something that is urgent. Click save. There it is. And let's say I want to do this by the priority. And so now I see urgent is at the top, followed by high, followed by medium, followed by low, and then everything that's not categorized is below it. So this gives project managers an ability to go in and actually make sure that all the various tasks that they plan to kind of associate or assign to various um, other users. So you can see the assign to column here um, and give it a priority so that the individual that's assigned to knows that they need to work on this immediately uh, re relative to maybe some of the other uh, tasks that have been assigned to them. Even though they all have due dates, some of these due dates might be further out, but still it's urgent and needs to be complete as soon as possible. And so we now have that priority field here. Now it's not just limited to projects. It is also available on regular tasks. So if you go here, my task manager, I see all my tasks. I now also see that priority column. And same thing, I want to click here. Oops, that links directly to the transaction. I actually have to go and edit it here. And once again, I can go ahead and give it a priority. And there it is. Okay, so we talked about project management. Next is more around project financials. And we recently launched a brand new report called Unpaid Bills by Vendor and Projects. So I can go to reports. I can scroll down and I can look at the reports recommended for my industry. And I can see the unpaid bills by vendors and projects. Open that up. And there you have, it. this is my unpaid bills by vendor and project report. Now this is in what we call our modern view and it also allows us to customize it beyond what you see in the base report. So I can go ahead and add additional columns. If I needed to, I can rearrange the columns. So let's say I want to move this down. It'll reflect it accordingly. I could add more columns. So if I want to add the memo field, I could do that. Um, and I can also change the filters. I can change how we're grouping them. So in this case, I have vendor and project name, but let's say I just want to look at it by vendor. There it is. Or let's say I just want to look at it by project name. I can do that. And since I have vendor as a selection here in my columns, it will list my uh, vendors anyway. And so this is the unpaid bills by vendor and project report with all the c customizations that you would be expecting um, with our new modern interface. That wraps up our demo for some of the major releases we had related to the Intuit Enterprise Suite in uh, December. Uh, really exciting stuff. Thank you so much for those demos of IES, Daniel. And thank you for watching. 
If you found this interesting or helpful, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. That's all we have for now, so I'll catch you next time.